No, and further hybrid map. Of course, it's gonna be coming up with Pandora. Quite a bit thematic, of course, to Avatar this year. And we are gonna be there for showcasing what it looks like. Yeah, that's actually looking like the Pandora symbol, right? <laughs> that's probably why it's gonna be called that way, I imagine. But it is gonna be there for a thing here with the civilizations being race playing with Vietnamese. And Juicy is gonna be playing with Sicilians. Wait a second. I think I've seen this map already yesterday in one of the matches. Yeah, definitely. This map is familiar to me. As all the way to the bottom, this is not going to be any kind of high amount of relics, but you're gonna be having tons of gold here. And also a decent amount of hunt. Oh, that's kind of funny. Because the last spawn was having boars here. If I'm not completely mental, then I'm thinking they were actually boars last time around. This time it's gonna be just plenty of deer. Add a bit of a weird amount of food, 143. Almost as if we were playing some mega random. Uh, but well, otherwise, next to the base, you are going to be reddit with small stone. Literally just small. You don't have too much of it because the rest of it is going to be all across here. On the, I don't know what to call that even. Some kind of simply rocks. And you're gonna be having the stone next to it, and he was a bit too fast here. Wait, what? What was that? I mean, like, why is the boar standing here? Did he just kind of like waste his hit points? Maybe even misclick in the race? What was he trying to do here? Wait a second, let's have a look at that. I'm a bit confused by that. Okay, I can see right now three piggies, by the way, next to you. So that's gonna be one of the stronger starts potentially for something like a Mongol. Oh, isn't the map with the two scouts? Yeah, it is the map with the two scouts, yeah. It's <laughs> kinda thinking if it is. There's a random memories from yesterday. I was just having so many sessions with Age of Mythology that it's all kinda like a bit of a blur. <laughs> what was going on in the Age of Games that I was casting. Yeah, it was unfortunately a bit too fast here, a bit impatient, Mr. Ace. I guess, I mean like you usually do not go for the bar with a scout, right? You're usually gonna be using Will and therefore you don't have to be taking care of that. So I'm fairly certain that is actually what confused him. And with two scouts, you can theoretically have some very nice early raiding, if you wish. And you can see with the lower hit points currently for Ace, he has definitely can like opened himself for some unfortunate occurrences here. Yeah, but got there we go, and of course, there we are. Yeah, it was kind of weird that it actually went back only now. I was kind of thinking if maybe it is in somewhat of a like initial position and it was kind of like pushed away somehow. So that's why I was also returning it back while it was standing in spot. But it was just somehow bugged apparently. No. Simply good job with the patch, I guess, the last one. They probably broke more than one thing. Seems like there are also some performance issues they even actually posted about. So... Seems like that the new testers that they supposedly hired are not entirely actually too helpful, are they? <laughs> but yeah, well, considering actually that uh, really their problem aren't lack of testers, frankly. Their problem is their project management. You know how it goes that the fish smells from the head and it's just like a whole problem with how they're approaching their work so it's also gonna be then influencing how they approach the testing what kind of people they have for testing and what they want from them and that's kind of like the biggest problem you can be having basically like completely complete novice on testing but if you're gonna be having good processes in place and somebody who actually understands what he's doing with the testing and whatnot then it just like doesn't matter as much you're still gonna be having good testing done but they have a problem, they do not know how to test in the first place. They're just gonna suck at it. That's their problem. And unless they realize that and therefore get some actual help and not get somebody, I don't know, from community who's gonna be basically like his experience is going to be playing Age of Empires 2 for 20 years. I'm fairly certain that's probably what, who they hired and they hired somebody, somebody new one. Then they're just not gonna be getting anywhere. They just need an actual professional, which is expensive. Especially for testing, because basically usually programmers are gonna be wanting to be programmers, not testers. 
So therefore, if you want to be having some real professional front testing, then he has to be having tons of experience and it will be therefore not cheap. No, nonetheless, I just kind of do have experience with professional testing and with live service applications that dealt with people's money. So they had to actually work and it's just like all, all the stupid excuses they actually use, why they actually have bugs there. Uh, just like not even worth to spend any kind of words on the incompetence there. But well, whatever the case, hopefully they're going to be able to fix at least a few of the things because at this point it's for several years, just kind of like chasing their tails. They just introduce problems, then they try to fix in the next patches as it almost looks like that they are doing it on purpose. So they're going to be having perpetuum mobile as far as getting money from Microsoft. <laughs> I'm hoping that's not the case, but you kind of never know what kind of weird things could be going on in the business world. But so far, we haven't entirely seen that much of an action yet here between the guys as the first two scouts, they didn't entirely like commit into it that fully. In kind of like previous maps and previous tournaments, you very often would be actually having like especially high level players utilizing the multi scouts for really quite an intensive early raiding. So I wonder if maybe they're going to be picking up on that players during the progress of the tournament here. The Pandora map and maybe even something else. Is it just going to be our junk? Or their junks? <laughs> right now just scouting. And just, this is going to be quite a bit of a useful unit here. Because you can see that even the scouts can't be entirely chasing it too well. And this is something that Juicy shouldn't be entirely letting happen. He's gonna behave needing the units a bit nearby and oh are we towering? Are we gonna be actually towering? No, it does. You're right. It does have a pretty good line of sight. Where do we have it? Basically the whole area. This is kinda nice. This is even better than a scout, right? Mm-hmm. Can see it's better than the scout. How's he on the way? And that's gonna be right about now scouted by Juicy. What a lucky coincidence, he's gonna be there and he's gonna be having some militia men ready as we are advancing at 23 villages both, but you can see that red is gonna be actually like two villages behind. And he's not actually going for trash, he's just going straight for forward build. Man, is this gonna be tournament of forward builds? Remember what I mentioned in the last map yesterday, somebody was going for completely... That was Q Philip, right now, I remember the name. Q Philip going for absolutely extreme Khmer forward push. Right now we're seeing this. I'm like, yeah, I'm ready. My body is ready. I'm used to it from Age of Mythology. Lately, people are actually doing it as well. It used to be a bit more of an old school thing. When I played 20 years ago, we were going for forward builds all the time. But in the past years, people just kind of got a bit more careful, let's say. And playing without such a build. But lately, it's coming back into fashion, which I definitely do appreciate. It's making the games more fun to cast and Frankly, it's also pretty good. If you know what you're doing with that, it really does bring quite an advantage into the battle because you are practically eliminating the defender's advantage. Besides, for example, right now, some donjon. But yes, if you have the military so forward, then there's no defender's advantage to be had from the fact that he's gonna be fighting next to his military buildings. But yeah, well, tower is gonna be in place. And of course, with the Sicilian here, it's gonna be a bit more powerful and... Uh, what was the change to the sergeants in the latest patch? Because there was a change to them. Did they they go cheaper. I think they go cheaper, right? So maybe it's gonna be a bit easier currently for Juicy to be putting a few of them out. And that's really kind of nice help here for him. Because they are not entirely too much of a bad unit. 2 n 2 is excellent armor for Feudal Age. Like, really excellent. So they're gonna be really good units against Skirmishes, for example. Spearmen as well. Just, yeah, well, the archers are gonna be sucking a bit. Can see you don't have Fletching though currently for race, who is not ready here yet. With anything extra, but we're gonna be having some good fun here to the south. What was actually race trying to do here though? Yeah, it doesn't entirely look too bad here for Juicy. Thinking that race was probably based on the first game, expecting that it's gonna be a bit easier and, you yeah, well, know, or maybe. Maybe his viewers actually challenged him or something. <laughs> but that's a lot of idle time here from the four wheels all the time. You can see considering that we do have the same amount of wheelies currently, that's gonna be definitely felt on the economy. But well, with the micro going on, 
He should be probably dividing the skirmishes and the arches, I'm kind of thinking. But I've been probably having some kind of better results there. I was kind of thinking maybe even just like sacrificing the skirmishes a bit to slow down the uh, surgeons so that he can be shooting with the arches and keeping them alive a bit better. And that's a bit unfortunate that it's not unfortunate. It doesn't have to be unfortunate that they are actually in range with the archer range. Because I don't know if maybe that's gonna be like, maybe they could be immediately a bug and the ta donjon is not gonna be retargeting into the units. That can happen sometimes. And that would be really useful. So therefore, that to be maybe at least part of the game. <laughs> You're thinking that Juicy wanted to be the one who wanted to be forwarding. Oh uh, well, maybe actually both are having somewhat of a similar plan for the game, who knows. But with second dungeon also ready on pretty good spot, because it's gonna be covering also at least partially the gold mine. Yeah, I can right now still camp it and block at least portion of the wood line here. But it actually reminds me that yeah, this was, if I'm not mistaken, the last map yesterday between Freakin and, and uh, Saladis Cape. And there was also tower going from Saladis Cape. So maybe this is gonna be a bit of a trashy map. Or trashy map with maybe some forward builders as well. But the Sicilian seamen like not entirely too much of a bad sieve here. But how much stone do you have? Because you have only just a small one in the base. And then everything else is gonna be quite far away and really kinda stupid to gather from. And you can see it's only 175. It's half of the normal stack. So you're gonna be having to spend probably a lot of wood onto mining camps all the time. That's also not gonna be too funny. So if you want to be going for some trash here, you're probably gonna have to be a bit more careful what you wish for and how you do it. It kinda is high amount of stone, sure, but it's gonna be obnoxious in the early game to gather from that. So for the later stages for Castle H+, plus, it's gonna be probably fine. But for the feudal, I guess it's gonna be not like the most ideal it can be. Three sergeants, one of them unfortunately pretty dead. So if it's gonna be noticed by Raze, he can be easily refighting him. And you can see he's trying to do so, but... <laughs> can see he's doing barely any kind of damage. Because that's the problem, he's doing literally one because of the early defense that sergeant has. And he didn't even need to be getting actually the armor for the melee, but he was getting it for the Pierce, of course, so, yeah. But he actually delayed them long enough. I don't think he lost a single village in the end. And, well, with the army coming back, situation resolved, no problems anymore. Oh, there's gonna be some kind of huge wall of China coming up. Oh, this is gonna be a nightmare to negotiate because it's really impossible to say if there's gonna be a hole somewhere. You're gonna be having to test it. If maybe there's not gonna be some random passage between the rocks. It's gonna be hard to really say and see. She's also gonna be making it therefore complicated to even gather the stone from there. Because the villages are probably gonna be having a hard time to even make it through. <laughs> when you play this one, your opponent made 500 towers. Huh, interesting, can see new one also ready here for Juicy, otherwise economically for example we're gonna be having the first line for the Vietnamese and he's gonna be also castling by the way and then he's probably gonna be, not oh, probably, maybe, gonna be castling as well but it could be just as easily just the extra town centers. Doesn't seem like he's entirely having that much of a high motivation to go on to the offensive here. And if you're gonna be switching to Juicy, same resources, so practically the same castle exchanges here. Uh, he doesn't have the second building yet. He's having literally just blacksmith. And towers... Oh, that's the market. I'm just blind. Okay, so no problem with that. Same advancing through castle age. 44 villages though for race, and Juicy is gonna be at 37. That is unfortunately a large difference. And well, we also haven't paid any kind of attention to the top side. And maybe your Lithuanians are gonna be interested in civilization here because you can see one, two, three relics just on one screen, and that continues. Four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten relics. And very easy to get. You're just gonna cut through the reeds here, and you're gonna be getting it. So 
And on top of it, Lithuanians are a great, great hybrid map, so sorry for spoiling your plans, Otter, I guess. <laughs> but yes, that, that seems to be actually a fairly solid choice here. And we'll see what the people are going to be able to figure out, what kind of other strats could be also taking place here. You can see continuation with the arches for race. No, of course, he's a Vietnamese. And the Sicilian, he so far is not entirely showing too many signs of switching into anything else but the sergeants. See, si. si. but not many upgrades on him. <laughs> well, <laughs> this is not entirely too thematic to what we actually have the tournament for. Blue Carbon Cup is supposed to be about kind of natural preservation and protection of animals and everything else and we are gonna be just kind of straight coming in and murdering everything that stands here and that is moving. Oh well, I guess maybe race is not gonna be the favorite here of the Coyotl and others. But yeah, well, you can kind of understand why he's trying to do so. So that he's gonna be limiting some kind of free resources that potentially Juicy could be going for. But frankly, you're gonna be having to go to the bottom. So the food is still somewhat legit because there's gold, right? So there's gonna become time where you want to be dropping town centers and you might just as well take all the hunt that is there as well with it before dropping the farms. <laughs> yeah, seems like that race is right now. Really role playing. Somebody wants to be rather actually maybe sponsoring some kind of hunting parties here. What kind of army do we have? There's the mango. And it's not gonna be probably able to get the hit here. Thinking that race is gonna be too much of a good player for that, but he cannot try it. Maybe he's gonna be stopping at the last second. Seems like it finally the arch range is gonna be gone. And da, 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 we're going to be having. Okay, that's gonna be a decent hit. And mining actually, gold mining for race. So he's gonna be further pushing into his economy. And did he drop the TCs? Yeah, he did. He's right now making from a second already, and he's gonna be going for knights. They're gonna be solid, of course, gonna be countering the mangos. And frankly, the sergeants, well, they're gonna be still decent, but they don't have at least any kind of bonus there. So it is playable. I think in it, probably getting actually monks would be some plan for the Vietnamese. He doesn't have redemption, that's of course why the knights against the mangos. But still, just like generic monks to convert a few of the sergeants, I think it would be definitely a good plan. And by the way, how is it? Uh, you, If you get sergeant, can you build dungeons? You can't, right? That's based on the civilization. Yeah, dungeon replaces watchtower. Okay. So yeah, you shouldn't be able to do that. Because sometimes there are some kind of fun things like that in games. If you're gonna be converting, you can be then doing what the opponent is doing, but I wasn't entirely certain because I haven't... Kind of don't remember seeing too many converted sergeants in the first place. Because usually that's not like the common counter unit to them. You're just gonna counter them with archers and whatever else. <laughs> whatever else and... Ah, uh, oh, okay, okay. It was almost looking like that actually he's gonna be able to get the shot in. But unfortunately not, so this is gonna be right now quite nice. Practically sacrifice of literally two horses for about three mangos. That's a very good trade. There is a very good trade, and he just like wasn't entirely ready to probably test his metal in micro in both the arches and the knights. So he just kind of left them away. I mean, like it worked out for him, so no problem. As he does have the first defense and bloodlines for the knights, and scorpions will be the next option for Juicy, which probably is gonna be working a bit better currently for him. And this is what it's gonna be, you know, the military something. Oh, he's just kind of trying to see where to go with Raiden in the first place. But he's actually playing it smart, because as we mentioned, as he was uh, murdering the animals earlier here, he's basically trying to block this with the way he's advancing through the bottom, right? So he's not uh, trying to... Uh, he's trying not to allow Juicy to kind of like establish in the bottom part. Still gonna be having some small gold mines here, so it's not like completely out, but it's gonna be getting, of course, increasingly harder. And since the gold cons consumption grows exponentially once you reach the castle age, he's gonna be having like maybe maximum 10 minutes with the extra gold mines that he has there. And that's probably gonna be even too high number.
Hmm, hey, good. Another reason also for the monastery that he mentioned earlier. Oh, he is actually going for... What if we have Duna here? No. I mean, like, it's a parallel economy, but this is just like one of the worst dogs you could have built here, I guess. Should have built it somewhere here, of course. But, well, at any rate, let's go all the way to the bottom, because castle is gonna be a thing, and we do have monkeys, and the conversions are popping off. You can see already three horses converted. Very well done, and no. Maybe right now, race is gonna be vision. He actually had those as well, as, of course, the castle will be finished anyway. That will be also, anyway, coming up. And... Hmm. What is he gonna be doing with that? That's a problem. That's what I call a problem, and the problem will be also Wills this time. 37 for Juicy, and race is gonna be at 85. Because, yeah, I was just gonna long term not see any kind of advantage here. Oh, those were some brave upgrades in there. But he probably misclicked it. <laughs> he was actually getting some uh, War Galley upgrades there. No reason for that. Gonna be probably getting some fish trepinos soon here. I mean, like from here, I'm. I don't think you can actually pass this, right? Can you? Or is this possible terrain for the boats? In general, you can be, of course, building docks even somewhere randomly here and getting some demo ships. That might be actually somewhat worthwhile. Because them ships are gonna be somewhat decent even against the knights. Oh, this way. Ah, it is actually possible and you can't be building dogs here. Oh, that's a good info then. Okay, that's smart then. Yeah, I haven't entirely read the information on this map. I have read some others yesterday, so... I'm gonna be learning with the players. I at least don't need it. I'm not luckily playing here, so I'm not gonna be able to use it in any kind of good way. So I'm just gonna be highlighting chatters who know better and having some interaction th thanks to that, so thanks for the info. That actually brings me back to the lagoon, that it may might have been actually changed, that we haven't seen the walls in the previous match, and it almost looked like with one of the palisade gates in there that he was attempting it. Who was that? Uh, or the for young panda. And therefore... Maybe it has been changed that you can't actually wall that, because it, I'm fairly certain it was possible before. In one of the previous versions of the map. Maybe it was changed, not sure. I guess you're gonna be learning somewhere down the line in further games. But yeah, well, even though the castle would have been probably finished here, there's just gonna be way too much of an activity currently in his base, with just practically no chance on the economy currently. Against right now even the score difference, 2700 points. So Juice is just like seeing the writing on the wall. 38 versus 13 on the military, patiently waiting all the archers here. So the active army doesn't seem entirely that scary with the cavalry here. So he's gonna be able to handle it, but he's not entirely thrilled about the further prospects of all of it. And if therefore this is really possible, and you can get the dog here, then it's actually opening quite an interesting, uh, as you say, like piece of map and strategy possibly here. But yeah, also what was untapped therefore were the relics. So this map actually does have plenty of options to it and what you can do on that. No, so looking forward to some further games. But well, today, and he's going to be there for race, taking the second game as well, and he's gonna be there for winning and advancing into the round of 16. So congratulations. Congratulations then. So probably nothing much to be seen here. Really just like professional blocking of the gold here to the bottom. That's gonna be quite a bit important piece of the success here, I guess. Whoever is gonna be able to do that. As the Sicilian economically even hand card. Otherwise first two, which is not too deep, but again, the amount of wills he had, they entirely allow for much more. And they just literally the first attacks for both melee and ranged. Squires for the surgeons. And their second defensive upgrade also in place. And for Tag Race, he is going to be having... Oh, very nice echo. Missing the second farming. Considering how many he has, that would be a worthwhile upgrade. To one on the arches. No thumb ring, for example, or even ballistics, interestingly. So he was a bit more committed to cavalry, it looks like, at that point. 
Now let's have a look into the statistics. Here we do have not entirely too many engagements yet, even though this was a lot longer game, you can see right now 37 minutes. Those are very low statistics for such a length of a game. It was a bit more kind of like tactically played, but the economy is just gonna be rolling a raise here. You can see that's what 4 8, 4 8, and 2 3. That's gonna be 6 7 1. 7 1 7 7, and 4 8,100 resources more for race than for Juicy. Yep, race definitely is good at dropping the TCs immediately after Castle Age. Control of the Echo, that is the important part of Age of Empires 2. The macro does really rule, even the battlefield, because it allows you to be kind of like not as efficient with the fights if you can be replacing the units as easily, then you don't entirely mind. And you can see he was already starting to collect the first relics, but literally just a few minutes ago. So congratulations to Tag Race. By the way, what is Tag? What is it short for? Am I able to be able? Sorry, am I gonna be able to find it somewhere? Age of Empires 2, Tag Clan. Now that's gonna be just looking for clan tags, as in, just like the English word. Eh, that doesn't help. But how about maybe AoE to insights? They have some information like that here and there. No, but doesn't seem like that it's gonna be exactly on his profile, so not sure. Maybe if somebody's gonna be knowing what that tag actually stands for. Feel free to let me know, because I don't remember, I already definitely looked it up somewhere in the past, but I just like don't remember. <laughs> uh, kinda liking actually his Twitch description in there. 26 years, 188 centimeters, 65 kilograms. <laughs> uh, that's a nice one. Actually started playing in 2022, he says. Really? Mmm, that seems kind of unlikely that he'll be so good in just like even half a year because he was playing really well already in in the Nations Cup. Maybe, I don't know, maybe just kind of considering DE. Not certain. Just kind of looking at Google Translate, so not sure if it's even translating all correctly. Uh, whatever the case, that's gonna be there for it for the match and good luck to both of them in the third rounds. Congratulations therefore to Tag Race in advancing onto a round of 16, which is gonna be the double elimination part of Blue Carbon Cup hosted by Hwepe Coyotl and also Watermelon Hero helping him out and well Juicy45. Good luck in your further tournaments and further endeavors for the community as he's apparently also hosting some tournaments as Otto is saying here. Where do I have right now the link for him? No and GG. And of course, if you are gonna be interested in some more information on the tournament, I've already added the command. So you can also, of course, add into the price pool. That is currently $123 for the tournament. And well, if you're gonna be adding something in, then half of it is gonna be going for the donos and half is gonna be going to do environmental NGO Nature Seychelles, which is kind of like the whole purpose of the tournament to highlight the environmental issues. Webekotl likes to be supporting those initiatives and you know, like put in some spotlight onto these parts of the world that needs some kind of help and assistance. You can find some more information about another you know, tournament coming up by Webekotl and also about the tournament and further things 
on both Liquipedia, but especially on AoE Zone. You're gonna be able to find more info on both the maps and kind of like the animals that are supposed to be protected and environments overall as well. So I recommend to visit it. I'm maybe gonna be giving you the link for the for the AoE Zone part. You can also then find the map guide. Maybe you can be looking at that. Once AoE Zone is gonna be loading, I mean like what are they doing with AoE Zone? Who got it actually into their hands? So weird what's going on with that, but <laughs> even weirder is actually how PKZ even got rid of it. That's kind of like even worse situation. Completely unexplainable, but yeah, well, I guess money. Always a thing. So that's such a cool map pool that you have here on AoE Zone. So today we were having what we played Lagoon, that was Coatless map, then Marsh Madness by Biss. And the last one was also Okavango by Hueva Coyotl. And da, 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 that was it, right? No, Pandora also by Tech Chariot. So that was right now the last map that we have seen here. So we're just gonna be heading for the confirmation of what we have already heard from other AoE. There we have that. There is Pandora. Brand new for the, for the Blue Carbon Cup, and the central part of the map is a large lagoon formed from a northern mangrove tree barrier with the volcanic flow emptying into the southern portion. The map is undockable everywhere except after chopping through to the wet beach coast in the north. So, yeah, well, somebody was paying attention, and that wasn't me. Plentiful stone is available from reef areas in the lagoon, and reefs may be accessed with transport ships to build more docks. Oh, so you can actually build a dock in between. Interesting. But you need to be getting the transport first from the outside, I guess, then, to get there. And the players are symmetrically distanced from the mangrove tree barrier and southern island, but there are 11 possible mangrove tree barriers configurations. The lava flow will damage any units that walk across it. Oh, that's interesting. And units will attack the lava flow if they are standing near it. Nah. <laughs> That's the one through bottom, kind of like the... No, the lava flow. <laughs> Whatever kind of dark thing you can actually see in there. And units will attack the lava, blah blah blah, if they stand near to it. And ships can travel anywhere on the map, except the southern island, which contains bonus gold and sometimes rhinos. Yeah, well, so... We have seen it yesterday, actually. The upgrades there, or the upgrades there, the animals extra. And players start with two scouts. You can probably therefore dock in the middle or some such. There seems to be kind of like normal water there. Reefs may be accessed with transport ships to build more docks. Let's start the map. Okay, game. Give me the UI, please. Hmm. So I can like supposed to be. You probably therefore can build the dock in the very middle then, but to get there you need to be getting transport first. I, I kind of don't understand that. At the same time, it kind of almost looks like it this should be even all impassable. Looking at the amount of rocks everywhere. I don't know, that's a bit of a confusing sentence there for a bit. So not sure. But that seems to be what it says, so... Maybe there's some kind of experimentation to be had with it. And this is right about now the lava field. That's kind of actually cool to be having even the vapors coming out. Not really sure what it's supposed to be. If maybe sometimes it can be spawning with some opening here, but even that looks like a block from the rock. Confusing. Very much confusing it is. But well, nonetheless, let's therefore also right now again watch that weird behavior by the bar. Why is it camping here? Should be immediately going back. For some reason it got bugged. Well, 
and then he simply just gave up and didn't want to be bothered with that anymore. Okay, so we're gonna be maybe seeing some other matches, some kind of more information on that. But that is gonna be there for it for today. And we have there for stream Tag Race versus Juicy, and before that, that was live match between memory like a goldfish, like literally. Young Panda was one player, and the other one was Murunyes. Murunyes was streaming his POV as well, at least it was posted in the promotion, so I guess I can also give the link here. If you want to be maybe looking through that, as the match that he streamed now was both POVs of Juicy and also Race. We've already posted the channels into the chat. No, and further matches, as I mentioned, tomorrow at 18 GMT, it's gonna be Otter AoE playing with who you have against you, you Pudding. So it's gonna be tomorrow 18 GMT, and well, something on Sunday I think is there as well. 21 GMT, there's Oladushek versus Snappy. That's what I can see there, and probably some further matches should be also coming up now, or oh, not only now I guess, but also after. Uh, still more games are to be played in the tournament. You can get, of course, the bracket also... Do I have it in the command here? Probably not. So if I'm interested in the bracket, that's gonna be here. I'm gonna like looking at the bracket currently. As I understood it, it should be double elimination from round of 16, right? But that is the move to the uh, winner's bracket, sorry, loses bracket here. So I'm not sure if maybe it's not supposed to be there or maybe it was moved over. I think it should be already from this round, from round of 16, should be double elimination. Maybe it's just like so that you have some normally looking bracket for the second round here and then it's gonna be like a new one or the built once everybody's gonna be playing their first round i guess maybe it could be the case but well that's gonna be there for that no and maybe there's gonna be also some age of mythology again tomorrow or well in the coming weeks practically it's gonna be for a few months months plenty of aom and if we get some matches that nobody wants to do then we can help the community to cover them as well no, and in between some each of them parts two here maybe still some check only guys gonna be coming up but probably we'll be casting blue carbon cup here a bit more by whoever kotl and watermelon hero and maybe even something else there was some kind of ask if maybe i could be doing some other games but from the czech community so we'll see and you can actually dock them so really so but with normal villages from like basically without the need of the transport or do you need to be somehow getting yourself in first and then it's gonna be possible mm -hmm. only transport gets you in and then you can build it okay so you just need to be still going outside there for further transport and then possibly having some shenanigans after. Currently seems like that there is some kind of the unexpected summer cup or whatnot. Germany versus Poland going on. Streamed by Nilpfert and Teres is doing it in English or the, in German, sorry. P -p -p then we do have some Roma division semifinals by Low Elo Legion. The Roman DLC. Tournament going on. Seems like that also Mr. Fluffy Bunny is doing the same. Those are gonna be in English. P -p -p uh -uh. Seems like that Avlid AoE is casting his own match from Hera's Colosseum if you are interested. Torneo de Safio Arabia, some kind of Spanish league by Night Claim is currently going on. And of course there is Nikov 
and BLR streaming. PLP AOE, for example, is also streaming. That that is a name that I've also streamed in Nations Cup. So maybe just kind of like deserves some kind of highlight. Stark, of course, playing and streaming and watching apparently as well. Chukru doing some Hera Colosseum games himself as a POV. Plenty of things going on currently, considering that it's already quite a bit late. Maybe slightly surprised by that. And from some of the other streams, don't entirely see anything here that I would maybe recognize or whatnot. Potentially, if you, for example, know Czech, then you can watch Kalnek. It's somewhat our rising star a bit. I think it's like 1800 plus currently, but does have definitely some chance on improvements. But yeah, well, I guess that's gonna be kind of all that I mentioned with the classics. So of course, feel free to choose what you want to be currently having some fun with. But of course, mustn't also forget to highlight the other AOE, commonly streaming some free for all games, especially also some other tournaments himself hosting, if I'm not mistaken, now and tomorrow. Most probably gonna be streaming his POV2 of the tournament match that we might be casting as well. Not entirely 100% certain, maybe we're gonna be doing Age of Mythology at that time or something else, but maybe we could be doing some recorded games later after. I don't know when, but somewhere, I guess. But yeah, okay, that's gonna be there for it. Even for example, somebody doing some Princess Yurid campaign, the Richter, if you're interested. So that's even going on here, just like absolutely randomly noticing. And thank you therefore for stopping by Otter. Thank you for the insights and the help, of course, with the information on the maps that you are apparently quite a bit well versed in. So good luck. That's gonna be one important step towards the success. And thanks Weber Coyotl and Watermelon Hero, and of course all the sponsors as well, pitching in onto the prize pool for the tournament. For that taking place. Now let's see how much you're gonna be able to help nature in first place and of course the players pockets as well whoever is gonna be winning it in the end at the well it's gonna half and half so it's a quite nice kind of charity opportunity to help do things that maybe you viewers enjoy age of empires too and possibly even helping some nature preservation what is right about now the name of that exactly so that we can name it again nature seychelles if maybe you'll be wanting to add something to them yourselves but yeah that's gonna be it therefore for today so thank you very much for watching i've been blackadder at blackadder's place hope you enjoyed and see you later